Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Live at the Apollo. What a treat, what a treat to be here. Let me, uh, let me tell you where I'm at tonight before we get going properly. Uh, about 20 minutes ago, the top elastic of my underpants totally snapped. <laughs> This is genuinely true. I haven't bought replacements, so makeup, I've had to tuck them into my belt. Um, realistically, I can already feel that they're working their way down. Um, so, about halfway through tonight's show, I'm going to have some sort of horrific testicular cummerbund, I would imagine. Just floating around. You won't see that because I'm wearing jeans, but I'll keep you up to date with its progress. <laughs> Let me tell you uh, the worst thing about being a fat middle-aged comedian, because I am, let's not, let's not mess around. I'm, look, look at what I've done to myself. I mean, it's, I look pregnant, it's ridiculous. And you know the worst thing about that? is that comedy attracts young, beautiful people. So you come out and you see really attractive, beautiful people and you feel like a fraud when you look like this. Which is why I was so relieved when I came out tonight <laughs> and saw such a sea of ruined middle-aged losers. <laughs> Who's over 40 here? Listen to the misery in those cheers. <laughs> and who's under 25? Yes! Yes! Yes, all right, well, shut up! <laughs> There's not many of us. We'll take you down with sheer bitterness. <laughs> you don't know what's coming, you people. You don't know what's going <laughs> to happen to me backstage. This isn't my original outfit. I was wearing a tight black T-shirt, and the producer had asked me to change. <laughs> Because he said I looked like a bin bag full of coleslaw. That's a quote. So, my body is it's disgusting. I looked at myself naked in the mirror about two hours ago before I came here. I stood in front of the uh, don't woo that for God's sake. I, I looked at myself naked in a mirror and I thought genuinely I thought to myself, you know what that looks like? My body looks like it's been carved by a four-year-old child out of a budget block of ham. <laughs> Just a rough approximation of a male boy. It's all pink and mottled. It's disgusting. <laughs> it's so depressing. And yet, I say all those things. I'm an amazing lover. <laughs> I am. I don't mean... Let me qualify that. <laughs> what I mean is, I've been having sex a lot longer than most of you, right? And of all those sexual exploits of mine, I picked up the odd thing every now and again that actually worked in all the masses of failures, and I've banked them up here, right? So slowly, over a period of many years, I've compiled this sort of greatest hits of sexual moves. <laughs> I've got them all there, and I could use them on any of you, and you'd go, I'm sure you'd go crazy. Here's the irony. Ready? I'm 44 years of age now, and now I've got that list. I can't be bothered. <laughs> it's a crime. There's only one way all of this amazing sexual knowledge will ever be used, and that's if, so like, one of you young, attractive couples I can see here, if you invite me round to your house, <laughs> and I talk you both through it. Like some awful sexual puppeteer. <laughs> what I love about the male brain is hope springs eternal. I thought this the other day. I was walking down the street. Even though I know my limitations and I know what this looks like, I'll see a beautiful 20-something-year-old girl walk past me and there'll be part of my brain that goes, maybe she likes ham. And I saw the most amazing example of this. I went to see my granddad, who's in a home, bless him. He's in his 90s. He'd tell you himself, he's finished. He's knackered, right? He's exhausted. He can't walk. He has a little blanket over his knees. And I went to see him, and he was sitting there, and I said, are you all right, granddad? He goes, I'm finished. I hate it. I'm so unhappy. 
And I said, oh, I'm so sorry. He goes, yeah, never mind, love. A nurse walked in. She must have been 25 years of age, right? <laughs> this is what he did. I promise you, he did this. Well, hello there. <laughs> of that girl's brain that was thinking, do you know what I fancy today? I fancy banging a man who gets out of breath eating soup. <laughs> it's awful. It's awful. Just being washed up. And there's Olympians in tonight. I know that. There's proper Olympians. Proper fit athletes. <laughs> Two of my favourite Olympians in tonight, uh, Harriet Mills. <laughs> Look, patience, my favourite sailors. Where are you guys? Let's give them a round of applause. Proper athlete. And I loved the Olympics. I loved it because I've no interest in sport. Really? Really? Right? <laughs> But I loved it. I thought it was such a positive and amazing thing, and I got hooked. I got hooked on sports that I didn't know existed. I spent a whole afternoon watching synchronised diving. I didn't know that existed. I spent a whole day watching dressage. Have you seen dressage? Guys, it's dancing horses. <laughs> Who would have thought that you, they dance to music? They do this. I didn't even think that was allowed. <laughs> Someone told me you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make it drink, yeah? Well, apparently, stick sister sledge on, they go mental. <laughs> well, we're going to have it in Rio in four years. I've been training my guinea pig, getting him to do the splits. He hates it. <laughs> so, Come on, Pierre, no pain. <laughs> okay. I met the most amazing man the other day. He is um, a man that's confirmed to me that no matter how strange we all get in life, there's always someone a bit stranger. He was a taxi driver. Uh, I flagged him down. I was in a perfectly good mood at the time, and he turned out to be a proper, you what, you toilet, you, you muppet, you love it, what up, right? Proper cockney. I was in a perfectly good mood. I flagged him down. He wound his window down, and he said something to me. Now, you tell me if this would have annoyed you, because I was perfectly happy. He said... All right, Big Bird, where to? Sesame Street. <laughs> I was furious. I sat in the back of his cab, seething, grinding my teeth. And he turned out to be the strangest man I've ever met. I don't know, who, who have you ever met that does this? He listed the contents of shops on our route that no longer existed, right? <laughs> So, you know, that's a shame. That used to be the old steak ass there. That was lovely. You could get your fillets, your T-bones, your burgers. Perhaps a lovely beer. And I went, oh, that is a shame. Because, yeah. There's old Terry's hardware shop there. You used to be able to get your nuts, your bolts, your hammers, your ladders, your high bits, jackets. Now that's all gone. There's the barber's haircuts. Right? And I thought, well, insane. This man's insane. And I was still fuming over the Big Bird comment. <laughs> I was waiting for a chance to get him back. I got my chance when we went past a shop that still existed in the east end of London. It was a pie and mash shop. And he went, oh, there's the old pie and mash shop there. And I went, right. He goes, yeah, I love it in there. Delicious pies. And I went in there the other day and I tried to get the recipe for their pies. I said, oh, really? He goes, yeah, because as well as being a taxi driver, I'm also a successful restaurateur. <laughs> Which, of course, ladies and gentlemen, was a lie. <laughs> And I went, did you get the recipe? He goes, no, I didn't get it. No, they wouldn't give it to me. They said it was a family secret. I said, that's a shame. He goes, it is a shame, because they're delicious, they're pies. And he said, the strangest thing I've ever heard. <laughs> Try and get your head around this. He went, yeah, it is a pity, because it's not just pie they put in those, you know. <laughs> I went, I'm sorry, mate. Because it's not just pie they put in those. I went, what? In pies? <laughs> he goes, yeah. I said, pie's not an ingredient, mate. <laughs> he went, what? I said, pie's made up of constituent parts that have been brought together. It's not an ingredient. He goes, what are you talking about? A pie's the pie. I said, is it? Because Jamie Oliver's show's going to be a bit shit from now on, aren't they? <laughs> he goes, what do you mean? I said, I'll show you. Hello, everyone. I'm Jamie Oliver. 
Today, I'll be making a lasagna. I'll just get the ingredients. A lasagna! <laughs> He goes, oh yeah, very clever son, but a lasagna is not a pie. <laughs> I said, it may as well be using your system. What are you going to do if you get a flat tyre on your taxi? He goes, I'll change the tyre. I said, you can't, because tyre is part of taxi, so you must throw taxi away. <laughs> he goes, I don't know what you're talking about. I said, do you honestly not? I said, all right, I'll help you. He goes, well, I'd like you to explain it to me. I said, all right, we'll do a role play. He went, OK, let's do a role play. This happened, right? I went, right, I'm a cake shop owner. He goes, OK, you're a cake shop owner. I went, right, you're coming in to buy a cake. He said, I'll have a cake, please. I said, hang on a minute. You've got a fatal nut allergy. He went, fine. I went, right, let's go. This happened. He was in the front of the cab. I went, good morning, sir. I went, good morning. <laughs> I said, can I help you? He goes, I'd like a cake, please. I said, certainly, sir, I have several cakes. Which cake would you like? And this is when he went up in my estimation a bit, because he genuinely did this. He went, I'll have that one there. Amazing, right? <laughs> he did. And that's where I pulled out my ace card. I went, ah, excellent choice. The nut surprise. <laughs> he went, oh, hold up a minute, I'm not allowed to have nuts. And I said, oh dear, have you got an allergy? I'd better check the ingredients for you, hadn't I? No, you're absolutely fine, sir. The only thing in this cake is cake! <laughs> he said, I can see nuts on it there, right? I said, no, I baked this, and I, the only ingredient I used was cake, so put it in your big fat face and swell up like a balloon and die. <laughs> and he goes, oh, yeah, very good, but at the end of the day, a lasagna is not a pie, a cake is not a pie, a taxi is not a pie. I said, there's no such thing as pie! <laughs> a pie is made up of meat, of gravy, of pastry, and one other thing. He said, what's the other thing? I said, I'm not telling you, it's a family secret. <laughs> Don't mess with me, taxi drivers.